Kaladin blinked. He wasn't in that hollow with Tien. He was on the plateau. He hated thinking of that day. He almost wished he'd never gone looking for Tien. Then he wouldn't have had to watch, wouldn't have had to kneel there, powerless, as his brother was slaughtered. It was happening again. Rock, Moash, Teft, they're all going to die. And here he lay, powerless again. He could barely move. He felt so drained. Kaladin, do you know the words? All I wanted to do was protect them. That's why I've come. The words, Kaladin. They're going to die. I can't save them. I... Amaram slaughtered his men in front of him. A nameless shard bearer killed Dalit. A light eyes killed Tien. No. Kaladin rolled over and forced himself to his feet, wavering on weak legs. No! Bridge 4 hadn't set its bridge yet. That surprised him. They were still pushing it across the chasm, the Parshendi crowding up on the other side, eager. His delusions, it seemed like hours, but had passed in just a few heartbeats. No! Lopin's litter was in front of Kaladin. A spear rested amid the drained water bottles and ragged bandages, steel head reflecting sunlight. It whispered to him. It terrified him. And he loved it. Well, when the time comes, I hope you're ready. Because this lot will need you. He seized the spear. The first real weapon he had held since his display in the chasm so many weeks ago. Then he started to run. Slowly at first, picking up speed. Reckless, his body exhausted. But he did not stop. He pushed forward, harder, charging toward the bridge. It was only halfway across the chasm. Sill shot out in front of him, looking back, worried. The words, Kaladin! Kaladin ran onto the bridge as it was moving. The wood wobbled beneath him. It was out over the chasm, but hadn't reached the other side. Kaladin! What are you doing? Kaladin reached the end of the bridge, finding a tiny surge of strength somewhere. He raised his spear and threw himself off the end of the wooden platform. Launching into the air above the cavernous void... Sill zipped about him with worry. Parshendi looked up with amazement as a lone bridgeman sailed through the air toward them. His drained, worn-out body barely had any strength left. In that moment of crystallized time, he looked down on his enemies. Parshendi, with their marbled red and black skin. Soldiers raised finely craft weapons as if to cut him from the sky. Strangers, oddities in carapace, breastplates and skull caps, many of them wearing beards. Beards woven with glowing gemstones. Kaladin breathed in, like the power of salvation itself, like rays of sunlight from the eyes of the Almighty. Stormlight exploded from those gemstones. It streamed through the air, pulled invisible streams, like glowing columns of luminescent smoke, twisting and turning and spiraling like tiny funnel clouds until they slammed into him. and the storm came to life again. Kaladin hit the rocky ledge, legs suddenly strong, mind, body, and blood alive with energy. He fell into a crouch, spear under his arm, a small ring of stormlight expanding from him in a wave, pushed down to the stones by his fall. Stunned, the Parshendi shied away, eyes widening. A trickle of stormlight closed the wounds on his arm. He smiled, spear held before him. It was as familiar as the body of a lover long lost. The words! In that moment, Kaladin was amazed to realize that he knew them, though they'd never been told to him. I will protect those who cannot protect themselves. The second ideal of the Night's Radiant. <sighs> Teft stumbled back having just set the bridge in place and found himself gaping with the rest of Bridge 4. Kaladin had exploded with energy. A burst of whiteness washed out from him, a wave of white smoke, stormlight. The force of it slammed into the first rank of Parshendi, tossing them backward. And Tep had to hold his hand up against the vibrancy of the light. Something just changed. Something important. Kaladin raised his spear. The powerful light began to subside, retreating. A more subdued glow began to steam off his body, radiant, 
like smoke from an ethereal fire. Nearby, some of the Parshendi fled, though others stepped up, raising weapons in challenge. Kaladin spun into them, a living storm of steel, wood, and determination. 